thing that I've learned about our apartment is that nothing has ever been changed in it. Like, <laughs> I just, I just cleaned, I just changed out, like, our stove filter, because the other one got covered in fire extinguisher gunk. Oh, yeah. And I was like, okay, guess we better do that. Guess we better do that. Did you happen to find out what that gunk is called? Uh, no, it's just gunk. There's, like, because I didn't get to read the label because it was our neighbor's fire extinguisher. So I don't know what the gunk is. I think it's... There's, like, a few different types. It's probably feta cheese. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's kind of like the Parmesan that you get in the shakers, like the craft Parmesan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just imagine that all over your kitchen floor. Oh. Imagine cleaning that up with, like, three different rounds of Swiffering. You know what? I have and I have cleaned that up before. My day yesterday. That was my day yesterday. It's not fun. Because when you try to sweep it it's not fun. or move it around, it just blows like like desert wind, just like light dust. It just moves with the with the with your motion. It makes the sound. It makes the bad sound. Don't like it one bit. Ooh. Um Welcome to Music is Good. My name is Devlin Galloway and today I am joined by Hi, I'm Annie Negrin. I'm Tuesday Ferguson. And today we are joined by Nick Sadler. Hi Nick, how are you? Good, how's it going? Pretty good. Good. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's all right. It's all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> I did not create a small fire at any point today, so I'm considering it a good one. Excellent. I'm not very sweaty right now for no reason, so it's pretty good for me, too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what it's about. Not, not sweaty, sweaty my, at all. My arms are cold, like, but totally I'm sweating. Sweaty. I don't know why. <laughs> no, it's... I think being... In this age of social distancing, I think it's still like a little nervous talking to people, even if you don't have to face them. I agree. My <laughs> my social interactions yeah. have been strained completely. They're they're just as strained as any comment you've heard me made tonight, like feta cheese coming out of a fire extinguisher. You know, I'm trying my best, guys. <laughs> it's like it's not even it's not even feta. Right. It's Parmesan. It's it's craft Parmesan. Feta would be like yeah. wet and yeah. salty and delicious. I don't like the idea of wet cheese. I'm sorry, that that was <laughs> wet cheese. Wet cheese. Um, imagine, if you will, um, pouring yourself a little cup of the brine from a no. tub of feta. No, Tuesday. Oh, no. <laughs> I kind of want to become like I want to become like a, a lifestyle influencer or some like like great value goop, just so I can make that into a thing and be like. Hi, girl bosses. Um, have you tried your feta brine Ugh. today? It's really, it's really full of antioxidants. What is a gatekeep girl boss and gaslight? <laughs> gaslight? Wait, are you, are you saying you have a, you have an idea for something called gaslighters? <laughs> no, this is. I feel it's, like this is so very. A it's a catchphrase from a very specific jaded meme community. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. For those of us who have yeah. experienced gaslighting and gatekeeping at the hands of girl bosses, <laughs> it's how we deal. That's a, that's such a specific combination. What are they what are they gatekeeping? <laughs> is it is it the manipulation yeah. like It's a social phenomenon. Uh, they like they don't like it when you want to learn about their manipulations and stuff. This is like, you're a poser. You're, this is not the kind of manipulation we know you to do. No, the point of being a girl boss is like dominating people so they can't know anything about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think maybe I'm out of the loop of girl bosses. You sound very earnest about that. I'm taking this very seriously. Anything you guys say. And it's also going in my journal. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but this... This podcast is not the most serious. <laughs> okay. No, none of us have attention spans, so like that's kind of our. That's kind this of our is brand. perfect, except that I am on medication for my attention span, so I might be bringing that level down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> or that's chill. you know, if this goes late, maybe the medication will uh, wear off, and I'll just start saying more weird stuff. <laughs> no, we we support this. <laughs> yeah. We it, absolutely support this here at Music is Good. Honestly, I just want to be able to read. <laughs> and then after that, my attention can just be wherever Ooh. it wants. I don't care. <laughs> uh, so, 
What are we doing today? Nick, want to tell us about the album we're doing today? Yeah, so I chose an album called Zoo Psychology by a long since disbanded group called the X Models, or X Models, actually, no the, from the early 2000s and, and maybe even the late 90s. This is their second record. And it's a pretty sweet record at that. I didn't think Devlin was going to like it, but uh, Devlin said they liked it. <laughs> awesome. See, like, see, like you all, I, I haven't liked noise stuff in the past, but I like noise rock. They're the difference. Definitely. Back in the day, uh, there was like little distinction between the two. Speaking of gatekeeping, like folks like myself were like, <laughs> they'd be like, I love lightning bolt. <laughs> like, I love noise. And I would be like, that's not noise. <laughs> like, like, that's a rock band. Um, you like noise? Name five of the yeah. noises. <laughs> Please name the spectrum of noises. <laughs> <laughs> You got your beeps, you got your boops. You yep. got your... You got your... You, you got whatever a tall boy sounds like. Uh, that's like a necessary part of any noise set. You got... You got, like, the frantic drums. Like, like you know that video, um, Bert and Ernie Go Brutal? Where... <laughs> <laughs> where it's... It's it's a, it's a skit from Sesame Street where Bert and Ernie are playing drums, but they speed it up. And they put some some drums that sound like this album, and it they just speed it up so that Bert and Ernie are like vibrating <laughs> at the drum. Yeah. So that's how this album sounds. That's the noise that happens most of the time. I remember making Devlin very mad when we did what I think it was episode five when we did uh, Noi Bouton, and Devlin was not happy. <laughs> I was not so stoked. I <laughs> you don't have uh, entirely um, Morrow ground in terms of your listening habits. Is everyone a little bit different in that regard? Oh yeah, we're all a little different. Yeah, I feel like there's definitely. I saw I saw Annie's Instagram. You seem like you you, you and I both might like uh, the same types of goth music. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. I'm just maybe, guessing. Maybe. I'm just guessing just on the visual maybe, cues. Like Maybe you can guess based on uh, the first picture and my Instagram handle, but... <laughs> the first picture in your Instagram? I don't even know. Did I miss that somehow? I don't know what picture it is right now. Hmm. I don't actually know what the last thing I posted was. <laughs> well, I'm looking, though. Dude, this is... Uh... <laughs> now I'm looking. Excuse me. Oh, that's like a me? really goth... You're me? ...kind of dog cartoon. Oh. Wait, dog? Oh, oh yeah my profile picture oh you know what There's, here's a picture of you dressed as poison ivy from the cramps i saw that and that's my, <laughs> one of my favorite guitar players i thought it was a great costume oh thank you nice job. that was halloween last year daughters um, did a uh, trance tribute, re tribute record in 2019 oh i saw that that was um were you guys on that compilation that 31g did as well yeah that's the one yep yeah, yeah, like, wasn't, like, Chelsea Wolf and stuff on there, too? I think so. You know, it's it's weird. Oh, yeah. I, Shit, sweet. I don't like hardly anyone's covers, and every time we end up on one of these, like, tribute records, I don't listen to anyone else's songs. <laughs> I don't even really like <laughs> listening to ours, but I kind of didn't even really look. 31G put out a really good um, birthday co uh, party cover record as well. We're on that one, too. Um, it had a... Co oh, you were! Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's a bunch of, like, different... There's a whole bunch of different like sass core bands on there, but um, Mel is on there, and their co their cover was really good. You just blew my mind. I have never heard anyone say sass core in my life. Is that is that can <laughs> is that a Canadian version of? I don't. We didn't have a name for it really. I've never heard that. It's like I mean, daughters are technically sass core. I Whoa. guess it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Your band it's is like... technically this. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's so funny I'm because so i remember waking up when i was 19 and looking at my guitar and going i'm definitely doing a sass core band that's, that's <laughs> how can i do a sass core um, band right away um, <laughs> on our on our favorite website um rate your music <laughs> sass <laughs> score is defined as a style of hardcore that emerged out of post hardcore in the late 1990s and early 2000s along the growing screamo scene on Believable. That that actually just blew my mind because I lived through that and I didn't know I didn't know there were like musicologist like perspectives on these like very small communities now. You know, a lot of that I, mean, I love a micro genre, you know? 
Love Dude, you guys, you guys are mentioned in this description. Like, as time went on, certain <laughs> bands, such as the number 12 looks like you, the sawtooth grin, and early daughters would take oh. the same attitude, aesthetic, and techniques of the original scene. I am no longer happy about this. <laughs> 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 Nothing against those people, but, like... <laughs> The fact that we have been referenced alongside of those bands all this time, it's been oh, a no. thorn in my side for like 20 years. I'm not kidding. It's like, um, <laughs> I have nothing against these people, but I do not see the connection. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, totally. But yeah, yeah I mean, I we've, can, we've can actually played with a lot of those bands at like festivals and things over the years. So in a way, I get it. It's really based on the listenership and not really the music, I, I, I suppose. I just kind of thought like... People are always like, yeah, it's post-hardcore, and I just kind of see it as, like, the bimbification of No Wave. <laughs> like, yeah, thank you. So, like, that's a, a, something hardly anyone ever talks about. It, it's like our, our, our bimbo aspects. <laughs> just bimbo-core. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> You guys need to hear something. I follow this bimbo on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> she, she posted the most amazing thing today. Hold on. Let's see if I can get this to play. Uh, this makes me great. Adderall or get five cups of coffee. I don't care. We have to do. <laughs> Grab your Adderall. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> no, I, That's I, insane. I love... You know what's insane about that is? The way I got on Ritalin is I told my psychiatrist, and this is true, that to feel normal, I have to drink like three to four cups of coffee a day. And then I no longer have anxiety or anything else. I just feel fine. And she was like, well, that's a pretty severe red flag. And I'm like, yeah, can you just please put me on something so I have to like <laughs> drink this much coffee? Like, am I going to have, what color are my teeth going to be next year? I don't know. So is that how you get psyched to believe you like this whole time? <laughs> I could have just like, I could have just like been like, I could have just gotten my boss at Starbucks to like vouch for me. <laughs> God, that would have been so easy. Oh, <laughs> that kind of just awoke something in me because I feel like I drink three to four cups of coffee to feel normal <laughs> every day. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should think about some things. <laughs> it, uh, maybe I don't know. It's possible, you know. I it. For me, maybe this is the wrong way for this podcast to go because we mentioned X models for like one second, but um, no, no, it's fine. okay. We just we just rant for an hour and a half straight. So oh, okay. I love I love to talk about mental health topics because they're they're this is not fun and jokey at all. But um, for me, coffee is like a coping mechanism. So yeah. if you mm -hmm. if you start to become self aware and maybe are wondering about that, definitely something worth exploring because it could mean there's something else beneath that that um, you, you might have a simple fix for in time. <laughs> <laughs> I have like four diagnoses. It's great. Yeah. I don't even want to, I don't even want to go into it. I for a fifth one today. So <laughs> I'm like, I need more diagnoses, right? You Just might. As many as I can get. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you'll get them if you don't do anything about the ones you have now. <laughs> 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 so so maybe just maybe to steer this boat a little back on track do we want to go over a little bit of the history about this band i i knew you i know you um nick you reached out to the band themselves to ask since it's impossible to find anything about them online yeah it's really tough they they really did fall through the cracks which is unfortunate because it's a very musically to me is a very interesting band because in a lot of ways they sound like their time but they also sound entirely outside of it and I can't find anyone who sounds anywhere near their second record, the one we're talking about, Zoo Psychology. The first record's called Other Mathematics, and they made it in their late teens and early 20s in New Jersey. Um, home recorded, you know, they took six years to make it as friends, just having a good time. Uh, and that kind of sounds like, it sounds like it fits into the canon of New York bands like The Rapture, or, um, you know, maybe like old liars, um, any, yeah. of, any of that sort of like, um, it's funny. I was going to call that like sassy, like early two thousands, like indie rock stuff. Um, but the X models were a little more strange 
really really more challenging than and then even like the rapture uh because obviously the rapture is a pop group they had some like really harsh guitar tones but the x models that first record sounds like um they listened to maybe brainiac i didn't confirm that with them i didn't even ask i don't know why but <laughs> um but then they make this like, incredible jump in a short span of time where they take all these really unique and angular and complex structures within their music and melodies and they 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 transform them using an extremely simple premise i was almost embarrassed for asking because i knew the answer but i was like how did you make the jump from this album to one that's crazy noisy and really angular and repetitive? And he was like, oh, I went into a guitar store and I played this pedal and it was cool. And so we just really, we just kind of wrote similar music through the pedal. <laughs> it was like, uh, I knew that. So I was, I was actually just going to bring up because one of the biggest, I mean... There's not a lot of music that came before this that sounds like it did, except for, like, a bit from the No Wave era. Mm -hmm. So I had some stuff kind of written down about that, um, just because I don't think there's... I mean, our general... Our audience is pretty general, so, like, I wasn't sure if any everybody knew exactly what that movement kind of entailed. Yeah. So I just thought I'd kind of, like, mention a little bit about it, if that's okay with you guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm for it. So... Don't. Wait, um, stop. Don't. Yeah, no, go ahead. Please don't talk about no <laughs> wave. <laughs> Show canceled. Just like hit the hit the pause on the recording right now. We're done. My clothes are thoroughly soaked. Um, I'm so sweaty. This is the <laughs> this is the sweatiest interview I've ever done in my life. It's okay. I feel like wet cheese. I went hike. <laughs> I went hiking right before this, so I am just absolutely, I'm like smelling myself while we're talking and I keep getting distracted <laughs> by like how smelly I am right now, so. I don't think, so I, I don't think, think you could find four more damp people <laughs> in a single <laughs> podcast anywhere. I went to Home Depot twice today, so I feel like the dust that surrounded me from the Home Depot has like helped dry me a bit there you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you got the sawdust treatment <laughs> yeah um. i don't know what that was but it was perfect <laughs> was, was that the lila tuesday yeah i don't know what he said what did you say i said you probably are gonna need to go a third time <laughs> she said that i should probably go a third time we're gonna need a way more powerful bidet <laughs> so i was just gonna say it's like no way it's kind of one of those genres you don't like really get it or you don't like it's kind of like it either clicks with you or it doesn't you kind of have to be clued in to appreciate it it was it was kind of like the response to the 70s punk movement in new york and they were like punk's boring let's say f that and have no tonality and ability to play whatsoever <laughs> so they were just like knowing how to play we're let's gonna just make a sound and no, you're exactly. gonna listen and you're gonna just deal with it it's just kind of like chaos made by chaotic people so a lot of like the front people were super like colorful characters so it's just um, like this podcast <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had, um, our very first episode was on Suicide, and I didn't really mention it, but Suicide was kind of like the first No Wave band, and they were fronted by Alan Vega, so he was like a crazy character, and then you had other bands like James Chance and the Contortions, who was also a crazy character who fought audience members, and then, uh, and then eventually, like, all of that, all of that era, like, it was like, um like theoretical girls and the lounge lizards that kind of trend like transitioned in the 80s to it like split off into like a dance genre mm. and then it's kind of stuck on its own roots um with a couple other bands notably like sonic youth and swans it's kind of it's kind of a weird genre but it's it's worth looking into but it's kind of the only connection like, the only reference that I have for X Models could be No Wave, because nothing else sounds like them. They're a very unique-sounding band. Yeah, that's perfect. That That's perfect and true. And the stuff I was saying about kind of like the early 2000s New York vibe, where they have like a dance thing, part of that context is also that there was a point in time where like popular indie rock... I'm calling it indie rock, I guess, because some of these groups did actually reach levels of success 
but only at a kind of an indie rock level, if you know what I mean. Yeah. But mm-hmm. these, this, there was like a lot of people at one period in time in the early 2000s and like maybe the mid 2000s that were all all getting into No Wave and referencing No Wave at the same time. It was like it was built into um, uh, the fabric of, of certain groupings of people. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was like it was like flux information sciences and like the yeah yeah yeahs, like early yeah yeah yeahs and stuff like that, right? Yeah, 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 and they're they're yeah. all in that documentary we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Although I uh, I always go, thought that was kind of a watch before kill the podcast, your idols too. if you can find it. Yeah, it's a really weird one, but if you if anybody wants that documentary, contact me because I will give it to you for free because my friend <laughs> ripped it off of a disc for me that he's had in his. <laughs> attic for 20 years i bought that the documentary i bought that thing on tour i made these guys like drive me some some place to get it on tour and i watched it on we don't have these anymore but they used to make these like portable dvd players that fold out into a (gasps) screen i remember those yeah (laughs) i would i had one of those i had one of those on a car trip as a kid yeah in the back of the honda odyssey and i plugged my (laughs) gamecube into it whoa that's smart that's genius (laughs) and i was playing like shrek smash and crash racing that's awesome (laughs) on the, the road trip i remember that quite clearly i went on a lot of road trips and i mostly just looked out the window it was kind of i kind of feel a little jealous <laughs> see the last time i had one of those like portable dvd players i had found it in a cabin at this like place we were camping and i opened it up and inside was uh paul blart mall cop <laughs> Score, score. And it was haunted. It was a haunted copy of Paul Blart. And blood was, started coming out of the screen. It was a really scratched copy, to be to be fair. Oh man, wow. it's a much loved copy of Paul Blart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that was some some like five year old's favorite movie, and his parents are like, "Yeah, f- it," and they just like let this kid watch Paul Blart like three hundred times and absolutely ruin his future. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> 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 more paul blart please. Yeah, everything i know i learned from paul blart uh <laughs> it's why my life is going so well <laughs> so i'm such a successful human being mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> anyway <It's>, <laughs> sorry where were we i've found some good um reviews on the online if folks want to hear some good some brand new sentences from Music reviews from 2003. Yes, please. I, yes. Whoa. Okay. Some brand new sentences I have read today. They were said in 2003 and probably never again. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from Pop Matters, written on 29th of May, 2003. It's not even midway through 2003, and we've already been subjected to the one, one of the most annoying, yet oddly compelling at the same time, albums of the year. <laughs> if you're in, if you're into shrill, twitchy math rock, then this is the album for you. If not, then run away, run away now. <laughs> See, That's insane. I I think the the math rock comparison is kind of interesting because I heard um when I was listening to it after I finished the album, I was just driving somewhere in my my little Subaru and um. <laughs> <laughs> it, it immediately, like, after the album had tra- had run through, it immediately transitioned to, like, my Spotify just immediately went to uh, Big Black. And I was like, oh, this kind of, these guitar tones and bass tones are, like, really similar. So I can kind of see that math rock comparison, maybe. Yeah, the totally. The said it's true, so it's true. <laughs> I, I did not run. The music review says it's right. I read that review and I did not run. But I will say this. If, if you're listening to this and you're going to check out the record, do keep in mind that you you probably will find it annoying. It's definitely <laughs> it's definitely kind of annoying. But <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. Uh, this record just caught me at the right time. It absolutely blew my mind. I, I've never been able to let it go. And I chose it for this, not because I thought it would be like maybe the best record we could talk about together but because i knew that i knew it so thoroughly and i'm still listening to it all these years later that i could talk about it you know what i mean yeah um because some of the other suggestions were were perfect they were um teenage snuff film by roland howard um what was the second one that that you that you suggested in the dm uh devin had actually brought it up it was uh alan vega's self-titled yeah 
I would have went with Station by Alan Vega. Oh, that's, that's a great record, yeah. That's, that's one of my favorites, only because um, I know that one very thoroughly as well. But yeah. um, my other choice, I was so close to picking it, would be um, Nawa Alexandria by Shikara. Do you know this group? The Polish post punk oh, band? Oh, yeah. Oh, Shakira. no way. <laughs> and it sounds like Shakira. That's the that's the thing. When you say it the way it's supposed to be said, it sounds a little like Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> I'm sure I'm doing it an injustice no um yeah no they're great they were like a like a polish post-punk like communist band were they not i think so i don't know a ton about their literal history i just know the record uh that record and its b-sides and stuff like that extremely well yeah it's a great record yeah very cool check that out too but yeah no i think with this zoo psychology they totally there's a lot of different things happening. So like math rock definitely makes sense. No wave makes sense. And, um, zoo psychology reminds me a lot of another band that was around near the same time. And also somehow never really, um, grabbed people, uh, which was called Yaoi. And I've, I've been talking about this band Yaoi <laughs> regularly. <laughs> I'm sorry. My DeviantArt days are haunting me right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't like not laugh when I hear that. It's like fanfiction. Fanfiction.net has like come back to me. Remember Yowie Paddles? I'm so sorry, Nick. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. Are we allowed to say Yowie Paddles on the radio? Yes. Okay, That's cool. Fine. So Nick, many people are- all right, wait. So <laughs> now you're just going to have to tell me what you're talking about. What is a Yowie Paddle? <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like you're talking about boobs or something. Kind of? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if... De- definition? Is, I was going to ask if Nick was clear on what Yowie is. <laughs> like, are you saying Yowie as in, like, the cryptid? Or are you saying Yahweh as in, like, you know, the spiritual thing? No, it's like no. Y-A-O-I. <laughs> Y-O-I? <laughs> What? <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a yowie paddle. <laughs> That's the hardcore side? What makes it hard? Is that like engraved into the wood? <laughs> um, so, yowie the kind of hentai, just to, just to be clear. <laughs> okay, so that, that's where the disconnect is. I don't, I don't really f*** with anime that much, other than this one movie, Wicked City, but... We, honestly, if you've been, if you're, like, internet poisoned like I am, I'd have maybe watched Mm -hmm. one anime in my entire life, and if you're just internet poisoned enough, which it doesn't sound like you are, Nick, um, this just becomes, like, a regular term, (laughs) I think I you might just be. Know I, just, that term. I think I might be poisoned in a different direction. I'm. I'm definitely pointed, poisoned by the internet, but I, I try to. <laughs> I try to leave the internet over there somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like I'm really trying to fight what the internet is is doing to me. I feel like I log. I go on Instagram, and when I'm done, I'm like Jeff Goldblum in the Fly, and I'm like I come out of that thing like you know with extra eyeballs and my nose is falling <laughs> off. And <laughs> like. I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I if really try to. Instagram does to you. I feel like you would just crumble into dust on the spot at DeviantArt. <laughs> at what? At DeviantArt. Oh, DeviantArt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come. Yeah, yeah. Home of the Yowie Paddles. I've never <laughs> seen these Yowie Paddles though. I don't know what I'm looking at that I'm missing these Yowie Paddles. A lot paddles. of depictions of Sonic. A lot of varied depictions of Sonic the Hedgehog. In- <laughs> creative predicaments okay okay uh, so that and that might mean bases, sex maybe these are bases a lot of children okay so maybe not sex <laughs> yes no you were right the first time i was so it's kids it's seventh graders it's seventh graders in their process of getting jaded to the world via this the is, internet i think about this sometimes i'm like what are these kids like, for instance, there's this guy covering a daughter song on YouTube, and what he does is he takes a, 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 a microphone and he just puts it up against a vacuum and then just sits there while the vacuum runs, which <laughs> is, is kind of clever, right? And in the background is the biggest, like, nude 
uh, like manga poster <laughs> ever. Like it's like I'm not even sure he realized. Like I don't know if he positions himself in front of it intentionally or not, or if he's so used to seeing this thing. But like, you are just painting a picture in my mind right now, and it is beautiful. Uh, you know, and uh, I see a lot of this, shit and I'm like, people are really fapping off to these crazy cartoons, man. <laughs> That's why when you said Sonic the Hedgehog, I was like, I just pictured Sonic the Hedgehog in like some insane like threesome or something. Like, I don't know. Oh yeah, that's that's tame. That's that's very mild. Okay, all right. So oh, I'm man. I'm trying not to gross you guys out. That's I'm trying to be an adult, I guess. I don't no, know. Oh, no, no, you don't. No, no. You are we are not delightfully adults here. innocent. You're delightfully innocent to the depths of DeviantArt.com. Okay, man. I have a surface level understanding of DeviantArt. Surface level understanding. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. confession. I accept confession this. Time. Confession time. When I was uh, 12, I used to post my uh, Harry Potter fan art on TV. <laughs> oh, same. <laughs> same. <laughs> it was, it That's was... incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so I much. Will, I will raise you one, Annie. I will raise you one. I was posting my Death Note fan art <laughs> when I was 12 Damn. on TV. Art. Damn. I do know so, what that is. <laughs> Argu arguably so cooler, you've though. you watched two anime in your life. I just... You know what? It's weird about Death Note is I watched that, that funky live-action one that came out, like, last couple years or whatever. <laughs> no! That's, that's that my... Intro shot. I mean, I saw it in the culture. Like, I saw Death Note around. Like, I know what Vampire Hunter D is. But, like, in the high school I went to, everyone was obsessed with Dragon Ball. And it, it was like when I was a kid... <laughs> And my mom, like, wouldn't stop playing Aerosmith, and now I hate those things. <laughs> I f hate Dragon Ball, and I hate Aerosmith. <laughs> it's like, don't, I have to, I can, little, little, little portions of things before I get blown out. <laughs> uh, so where were we? <laughs> God, where were uh, we? You're reading some brand new sentences. Steven Tyler, if you're oh, listening yeah. to this, man, I'm so sorry. You know? No, no, you don't need to be sorry. Dude, that, he's a noiser. You don't, you don't think he, he's... That guy's a noiser, big time. That's what's going on. <laughs> this guy's got so many tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and all the tapes have, like, war pictures on the cover. <laughs> yeah. Like, casualties of war, like, like photocopied yeah. 12 times. Yeah. I would like to read this brand new paragraph to you. Mm -hmm. if yes, I may. please. Go ahead. It takes about 25 listens to the record to get a real handle on each song, and when you do, you don't know how to react. The album is that impenetrable. You hear screaming, but the only comprehensible phrases you can make out have something to do with pink noise and zoo animals. <laughs> um, so what do X models sound like? Well, if you can imagine a horny chimp on amphetamines screeching into a microphone while the boarders play Fugazi as if performed by Cap... Captain Beefheart's magic band, while also on amphetamines, you'd be on the right track. <laughs> yeah, that's actually not that bad. I don't even think that's... That doesn't even sound all that insulting. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's so wild to me, though. Because, like, I don't think that about... The, I don't think this is inaccessible at all. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so either. I, like, complains about noise music often. I didn't even hear the lyrics about the zoo animals, because one of my jokes... L like that I was gonna make is that I was sensing like a profound lack of zoo themes that <laughs> I had expected from the title like I was I was really hoping that it was gonna be zoo themed music like some midi flute like like the zoo tycoon theme um, but it's just some guys yelling about their wieners like <laughs> I know that's what my band is too and I gotta tell you it's hard to write lyrics uh, that are different than that you know True. It's tough, you know. The thing is, just like um, I was gonna say, the uh, zoo psychology of the name I think is like uh, you know, if maybe I'm saying the obvious here, so if I am, I'm sorry. But um, it's I think it's a metaphor for having sex like an animal. Obviously, it's like yeah, you know, that's that's the whole thing. And so I actually wrote when I wrote Shaheen an email to ask him one of the things I was curious about. I was like, can you tell me if you know of a resource where I can actually look at the lyrics? I was like, I don't, I don't really know what the lyrics are. And he was like, look, he was like, let's not go there. Like, I don't think I want you guys discussing the lyrical content. There was a lot of things. I forgot. Yeah. He was like, I forgot. No, but he was saying there was a lot of things about quote unquote boning. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that cracked me. I was like, you know what? My band too. And that's, that's totally real. 
I was actually going to make a comment that every resource I have looked up on the internet says there is no available lyric sheet anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that that guy started that review with like, you had to listen to it 25 times because one of the only discernible lyrics on the record is um, <laughs> they start a song and he goes, it takes three weeks of your life to buy a mattress. That's the lyrics. Clear as day. <laughs> 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 it's absolute chaos, dude. Thanks. It's like... Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I would feel chaotic too if you didn't have a mattress for three weeks. <laughs> like, yeah, like, let's be real. What are you even doing? Why does it take you three weeks? Can't you just get one of those ones that are all folded up from Amazon? What is this like, two thousand two? I think the reason, like those those reviewers, they they hear the music is because their two thousand two brains hadn't. Like, noise now is, like, so common, you know? It's, like, everywhere yeah. in the culture and our ears have, and our brains and our neuroplasticity and stuff have all come around to this concept. Not everyone, but, like, it's it's not a, a, as obscure at all. But, like, if you can imagine somebody who was, what, I mean, what the hell was popular in 2002? Like, Arcade Fire and then, like, you know. Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> the Spider-Man theme song was massive in 2002. <laughs> But it was like um, people uh, loved like Justin Timberlake then. Song. What did you say? That Five for Fighting song was popular in 2002. That's what I know about 2002. I don't remember anything from that time. I'm trying to remember. I wasn't listening to anything on the radio, so I, I couldn't even tell you. But I just, I just know that like in the late 90s when I first heard bands like Arab on Radar, I, I literally didn't know what I was hearing. And it's, <laughs> it sounds. I was actually gonna bring them up. Yeah, it, and that's not even like a, a like a ch like trying to be like charming or something. I they're from my town. I saw them a lot. They were always on shows that I was going to see, and I would always be like, "What the f are these dudes doing, man?" Like, I was like a kid, and it would be four dudes wearing diapers, like playing guitar, <laughs> um, out of PA heads instead of amps, and it, I just was like, "I don't even know what I'm hearing at all." And what's crazy is, is one day I heard them, and I was like, "This is this is literally the best thing I've ever heard." I've never heard music. I, I it, like it's like my brain had to catch up on a physical level. It had to create a neural pathway that that labeled Arab on radar in order for me to understand it. And um and I think that's probably why like back then you know that zoo psychology is just like way too challenging of a listen for most people. And and what's weird is it's not weird at all. Not surprisingly, Shaheen was telling me about how Weasel Walter, uh, Walters from um the Flying Ludenbachers, who also plays with Lydia Lunch. Um, and is is basically considered sort of like a um, kind of a challenging music uh, savant, and um, he he's older than us, and he took them under his wing and and tried to get them from other mathematics to zoo psychology by um, ripping CDs of like really obscure fucked up music that he had, and they they were t he was telling me about this in the email, and I thought that is the coolest thing ever, you know? That is incredible. Yeah. Right. Like Weasel is considered a legend to certain people, so yeah, is, he's he's a cool dude. Yeah, what's so. what's the name of that that group he drums in with Lydia Lunch? Do you know? Uh, Big Sexy Noise was that Big Sexy Noise or was that um, Retrovirus? It's Retrovirus, yeah, with Tim Dahl from um, Child Bite. No, not Child Bite. Uh, yeah. Child Abuse. Yeah, yeah, Retrovirus. But we all know how Nick feels about Lydia Lunch, so she's my favorite. She loves techno, which is why I love her. And <laughs> <laughs> she's really into knob turning. Yeah. Techno head. <laughs> techno head Lydia Lunch. She loves that shit. We meet we were we meet right in the middle there. <laughs> she loves EBM like I love EBM. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean I guess it makes sense. My my gripe with that is like a the gripe of like a you know, I don't know. Been like an ignorant 23 year old who's on tour in his band and thinks he knows everything so he probably should be disregarded by the 38 year old i am today <laughs> <laughs> we could start fresh with lydia lunch's catalog <laughs> <laughs> i said i was gonna bring up arab on radar because when i was listening to this they were actually the first band i thought of because one lyrical content just about Mm -hmm. wieners and stuff was like 100 <laughs> percent. i think that was just a thing with those this is literally really shaheen's worst really nightmare this is exactly what he didn't want us to do <laughs> it's, like, it's like i don't want to discuss the lyrics because you guys are going to figure out that we're just talking about our wieners like you're going to say wiener and i'm going <laughs> to jump off of a building <laughs> but yeah no, how that's... about weenie how do you feel about weenie, weenie. I don't know. I think it's all fair game, yeah, considering weenie. how absurd how absurd men are, are about their weenies. You know, we've had some ones when I was a kid that were pretty good. Ween it was one. 
It, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say ween it. <laughs> I have I have only heard actual adults ever use the word weenie seriously. That's in a crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Have, do we know how many... I've seen things. Tuesday, didn't you say you were going to look up how many euphemisms we could use this on the radio? Oh, yeah, I was going to make a spreadsheet. Do they have a list? Like, they have an accepted list? <laughs> of words? Yeah. For I was more so just going to go by, like, a mission. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are, what are the euphemisms that they didn't say we couldn't say right you could you ha- you could have some workarounds that would be probably really easy to create I'm right. i don't know what happened to me the older i get the more i use the word pee and i feel like <laughs> because it's the funniest thing i'm like wh- what is that where does that even come from like what is pee that's crazy who came up with that the first person to say pee i don't know <laughs> like you know i don't i don't literally I, i'm sorry i'm just thinking about I'm just thinking about PP, like the um the artist toy that is very popular online right now. I literally used the word uh PP last <laughs> night in reference to John Kale's. <laughs> Why are you talking about John Kale? <laughs> My favorite part about this whole conversation is that it's on brand for this record, so it's like not even an off topic, one hundred percent. Good, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, Tuesday. please look at the picture Tuesday sent. Hold on. You have to. Let's see. I don't use Instagram on my desktop. Let me hold. All right, let's see. He's really good. He's really nice. He looks nice. like a pee pee. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Why is um, he in this like dirt tunnel? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a fugitive. He's a fugitive and he's on the run from yeah, the law. Yeah, pee pee on the run. <laughs> This is canon. This is also, this is kind of a metaphor. There's like a pee-pee in a long, dark tunnel right now. So <laughs> it's clearly, wow. yeah, and it's clearly a little wet in the front. There's like a dry patch in the middle, which is unusual, yeah. but we can work with that. <laughs> Nick, we're giving you, <laughs> can you please, I'm giving you the award for, please listen to pee theme. I'm giving you the award for the horniest comment on the podcast. So what up? <laughs> <laughs> Fully horny. All right, I'm going to listen to this song. Here we go. <laughs> First of all, it's called Pee-Pee's Theme. <laughs> I want to hug my boy. No, I'm done. Nope. What? Double, double are you able to put Pee-Pee's Theme in the car? I can put 10 seconds of Pee-Pee themes in there. You're doing, they're doing this intentionally, right? They know what they're doing. There's no way. It's so so basically <laughs> basically this is a remake of an actual f- uh bootleg Furby that was released in 1999 and uh, subsequently pulled from the market <laughs> for copyright infringement uh, which is called a hoodie pet and so basically they just remade the hoodie pet but 20 years later because they're not going to bother to sue them now this is insane and now you can just buy them all right that makes sense because when I first saw it <laughs> I, I thought TV. it looked like a Furby a little bit. <laughs> He's just—he's. There's pee-pee. a lot of Furbies he's today. We were smoke. We were looking at this dank ganja Furby earlier, <laughs> called Swampy, maybe. <laughs> Swampy, <laughs> Swampy. <laughs> yeah, this guy's dank as. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's stoned, man. He's toast. He's so. <sighs> There's so much like drama online about Swampy, <laughs> like. Well, I have some questions There's about so Swampy right now. Mad. They're like, they're like, you should sell Swampy to me right now. I would take good care of him. You're neglecting him, and he's probably are both. these are these two different swamps? These guys that I'm looking at at the top. One has hair and and both ears, and the other one doesn't have any hair in one ear. He's kind of he's kind of gone down a really swift decline in his Tumblr fame. He, like, he already kind of looked rough, and then he lost an ear. And, like, the bone. Not even just the ear, but, like, the bone of his ear is gone. Oh, damn. Like, that doesn't just happen. He looks like he smokes weed. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he is weed. He looks like a Yeah, he does. Lug. He looks like a nug. This guy's so dank. It's crazy. <laughs> he probably smells like it, too. Uh, he probably smells very This dank. is not helping me. This is how I am with coffee. Like, I have to, like, steer clear if it, like, Twin Peaks, because yeah. every time that guy lifts a cup of coffee to his lips, I'm like, uh. And I see this <laughs> swampy Furby, and I'm like, oh, I'm out of weed right now. No. 
Wow. Um, I also want to show you the Furby that was found buried in the desert. <laughs> uh, name of Bumbleweed. Um, Nick, if it wasn't clear, Tuesday is a Furby obsessive and owns many Furbies. Oh. I have around 40 Whoa. right now. <laughs> Do you have a Swampy? No, I gotta don't. gotta get you a Swampy. I'm looking um, after this. That's gonna be like my goal for the next month. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Good luck, though. The eBay, ma- the eBay market is saturated. Here's the thing. <laughs> I- I'm not even kidding. I know this guy. When eBay first started, he became one of the world's first eBay power sellers. And he has... <laughs> he ha- I used to work for this dude. And he has... When we were writing our first um, record... And he has like warehouses filled to the brim with toys and comics and video games. It's it's crazy. Oh, you could try it for ask him. He might uh, have a Furby. That's what I'm saying. Or he might know who does. It, it's Holy it's shit. wow. <laughs> no, this poor Furby. Wow, <laughs> that's rough. That's like a zombie one. <laughs> they found him in the desert. I think they got him working actually. This, I don't. Uh, this makes for um, great radio. <laughs> oh yeah. So this new Furby is like he's basically sun bleached to hell, covered in dirt. He looks he looks like a zombie, like kind of like a, like one of the desert zombies you'd see in an old seventies zombie film. One of the eyes is like it looks deceased. It looks it looks. <laughs> Speaking of Laura Palmer, it looks like Laura. Speaking of Twin Peaks, it looks like Laura Palmer without the plastic. <laughs> um, the one on the right is what he would have looked like. Originally. Oh my god! <laughs> um, see there, we we didn't end up talking about the lyrics. We just completely sidetracked to talk about Furbies for a this while. This is like a meme about I'm like. Sorry, this is what happens. This is like a meme about like. Uh, like what noise does to you like you start off all fresh listening to lightning bolt and you end up like this other guy over here listening to Frida this guy looks like he's kind of like a crust punk Furby a little bit like he looks like he, he like, yeah like he, like he rail hard. He it's, the it's the amoebix Furby it's like <laughs> This Furby really enjoys disc clothes. This is perfect. This is good. Um, he, he needs an ass flap thing to sit on for his punk pants. <laughs> yeah. I think that Furby, looking at it, I bet he's hot for discourse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that, think about that, think oh about the God. metaphor. This guy was buried in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> he's got mm-hmm. some things to say. He was all say. up in the desert, just buried. <laughs> All right, we should move on. I don't want to be that guy anymore. I've I've reached my I've reached my limit. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that guy I'm not anymore. This, I'm not the man I was one I'm moment different. ago. <laughs> Please, Abraham, I'm not that man. Um, I wanted to ask a question because <laughs> I I showed this album to a couple people who have like been in this scene around here, and they all say this, this album is like incredibly important, which I was shocked by, but. I like the band, the blood brothers, and I see Mm -hmm. them come up a lot around this band. And I know that this band came way before them or way before being two years. Guess what? On rate your music. Blood brothers are also rated as sass core. I knew that was coming. I knew (laughs) it. See, that makes sense. They are the epitome of sass core. So it's weird that you did this. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm about to pull this insane full circle. I got to tell you, let me just derail what you're about to show us but like so our bass player used to in he used to work at a record store here called Newberry Comics and he had like a really classic like 70s spinal tap like mustache and haircut he looked insane he looked like a like a, a crazy drug addled he-man action figure oh hell yeah <laughs> and yeah. Fred Durst walked in one day and <laughs> <laughs> And walked right up to Sam and said, hey, man, I'm shooting a period piece from the 70s here in Providence. He's like, do you want to be in my movie? And he was like, (laughs) Sam was like, it, yeah, of course. So it's a movie starring Jesse Eisenberg. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) there's a scene where they like walk into this bar and on on, like the I think it's the left side you see at the bar. It's like Fred Durst and our bass player having a conversation with like Jesse Eisenberg (laughs) being like closed in upon like in a different part of the room. 
Anyway, I just wanted to bring that full circle for those of you who don't know, which is everyone. No, we were talking about Limp that's Bizkit a, before the podcast. That's a sick um, daughter's fact that we can share with them. I like that fact. There is a weird the fact. Um, I would like someone to read the Jesse Eisenberg interview. That can we, who wants to be Jesse Eisenberg and who wants to be the interviewer? Uh, role play. <laughs> I could be the interviewer. I would switch the roles for okay, a minute. Okay, cool. Devlin, I think you have Jesse Eisenberg energy. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that, but I accept it. Okay, let's go. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay. And scene. People on the street say mean things to me. Like what? I get called Napoleon Dynamite because I have curly hair. I live in New York City and I ride a bicycle. I always bike down Ninth Avenue and there's this kid who goes to school there named Abraham. Every time I pass him, he calls me Napoleon Dynamite. He screams it out and his friends laugh. That was a fine movie, but I wasn't in it. <laughs> what do you say back? I say, please, Abraham. I'm not that man. Oh, my God. <laughs> And we are all not that man. And that's what I like about that. Anyway. That's, that's um, insane. I was going to say and ask for your opinion, uh, Nick. Do you think that this band had any influence over, like, the Blood Brothers or bands that, like, were like them? I don't I don't know for sure, obviously, but I think it's entirely possible because... Um, Although I personally see X models as being a standout and different from the blood brothers and daughters and a lot of stuff. I think we all at that time sort of had some kind of awareness of each other in a general sense. Um, mm -hmm. It every, everything seemed to be kind of um, almost like a close conversation of like, it's sort of like no wave, like no wave is really only a, a, a certain collection of bands and that's it. It's mm -hmm. like 10 bands or 10 groups of people. Um, and I guess there's some solo artists in there. And then and then that's No Wave. Nothing else is No Wave. Everything is just what happens after No Wave that includes No Wave. And so it's kind of like that. You know, like Daughters was listening to a little bit of Blood Brothers, you know. Um, Blood Brothers and Daughters toured together. Um, Daughters and X Models played shows together. Um, you know, it was really... Um, scenes, scenes then were different. They weren't quite as separate as well and so there was a lot more melding of shows like the one of the first i think the very i think maybe daughter's second or third show was with this italian crust band who had come over here called <laughs> bastards which is like a legendary crust like crust grindcore kind of thing and um but um, it was just like that then i i like the term italian crust i like the term italian crust, italian but crust. consider biscotti <laughs> <laughs> Full biscotti core band came over. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's entirely possible. I think um, I showed my partner um, X Models when I told her I was going to do this, and she immediately drew the line between X Models and Blood Brothers. But at the same time, culturally on a much larger scale, like everybody was doing sassy. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't necessarily like sass core makes sense to me because it's describing like something that's connected to like punk and hardcore, I suppose. And then. But like you could find this stuff like everywhere. Like for instance, all those bands like um, like uh, like the Hives and stuff. Those were all major rock bands, top forty groups. But they were also doing the same sassy thing. And then it even goes a little further back to like um, makeup, the makeup, um, which was mm. kind of like maybe kicked the whole resurgence of kind of like sassy rock and roll off. Uh, which is I, I don't know if you're familiar, but that's Ian Svanonius. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, makeup was like highly sassy, and then is is sort of why at that time everyone started dyeing their hair black and and going mod and wearing like white belts and black tight black clothes and stuff. They were all kind of like more or less kicked off by what the makeup did um, in hardcore, you know, in punk and stuff like this. So uh, I don't even remember what to talk about it anymore. But I don't think the X models is like the Blood Brothers. I just think that because everyone was doing sassy, that's like probably the closest connection you could make in a, in a in a in an extreme music kind of sense. Um mm -hmm. or like an underground music kind of sense, I should say. Uh, uh, <laughs> Blood Brothers is not really very extreme, but yeah, and it's like how like just a handful of years later everybody was singing in a falsetto. That was like the next thing that happened. Like people were just singing in falsetto voices. Oh yeah. It, ha yeah. it happens like that. People we all just kind of discover the same at the same time, you know. Especially with the internet, super easy at this point.
you know, like post punk re- renewal, uh, post punk revival. They're calling it now. You know, we all randomly suddenly are in post punk bands. You know, at the same time, it is. It always works that way. People just try and categorize things. Like they just want to box things. So how y'all feel about I... scrams? Have you heard? Have you heard oh, about scrams? No. <laughs> Um, my favorite, I, my, I like scrams. my favorite scrams band is an Edmonton band called I Hate Sex. Um, <laughs> very good band. Um, most famous for being Laura, on Laura Less's shirt in a hundred Gex video. Um, okay. Yes, that's, uh, I Hate Sex were a really great band, but they, yeah, they're considered a scrams band. It's just like, it, it's kind of just a term for like, Eat, like screamo where they don't know how to scream <laughs> yeah pretty much I, I used to do sound for i did sound for a long time before the last daughter's record came out and um it was a great job i loved it and um, i worked at a non-profit and um we have a, an entirely open door policy there and it's it also 100 percent free speech so if you like you want to walk in that place and say something entirely problematic they're really like well you know this is entirely free speech people can watch you or they can't and by that same token, it's like literally any music except there is an original music policy. So it just has to be stuff that you wrote. You can't do covers there. Yeah. Because they're trying to boycott, um, you know, uh, having to pay royalties um, on, on you know, when when artists aren't even going to get ever see that money unless they're huge. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. long story short, I walked in one night and there was like these younger folks playing in a band. And I was like, yo, you look exactly like we did. I'm like, what is happening here? I like asked some kid. I'm like, what is this? They're like wearing the same clothes I had. It's so strange. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and they were like, oh, these are like Scrams bands. And I was like, Scrams, huh? That's strange. <laughs> and then I'm listening to it. And I'm like, no, man, these are like straight up Screamo bands. So like that's <laughs> after the show, I was like, yo, what is Scrams? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, it, it's actually just basically Screamo. And then I, I looked it up and like, there's a whole group. I didn't realize there's a whole group of people who had discovered Screamo, rediscovered this stuff, rebranded it Scrams, and then brought back like band names and album titles that are like 10 sentences long, <laughs> like full narrative band names and stuff. Like we used to have, like, you remember that band, You Will Know Us by the Trail of the Dead? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. They they were not really a Screamo band, but they totally, that, that band name is exemplary of the era. Anyway, <laughs> Scrams, man. That's so strange. I don't- <laughs> I can't I, believe uh, that. I grew up, I grew up playing in Scrams bands in high schools, and I nice. had sentence long band names. So, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm all right. Let me clarify exposed. though. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to derogate anyone. I'm if I'm derogating anyone, it's it's Father Time for making me an old dude. You know, because <laughs> to just to just live past all that and then turn around and I'm like, oh my god, I'm at that age where the that I was doing when I was like 18 is now like it's come back and it around and it's cool. It's like it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a trip when that happens. It's very strange to see that. That's how I feel about like seeing people who are seen now. Yeah, why like, are, I love it. why I'm are seen it. kids like it's a huge trip cuz it's like as the internet advances culture more and more like culture moves quicker. So it's like the 90s are suddenly back and then after that it's like whoa, all of these like Gen Z suddenly like like, there was this, like, thing going around where it was, like, a Gen Z making a compilation on TikTok of, like, high school in 2010. And they're like, wow, I wish I, I, wish I was there. And it's like, honey, no, you don't. <laughs> like, Honestly, like, um, the only social media I even enjoy anymore is candypandards.com. That's candy with a K, like the, like the B. Um, Whoa. Uh, I knew that yeah. was about to come back. I could see it starting oh, to emerge. Back. Oh, it's back on TikTok, and all the forums look like MySpace of back in the day, but then you read everyone's bios, and they're what? like, I'm 15. <laughs> That's so I crazy, I was born man. in 2005. <laughs> Ugh. So yeah, young old. people are sick, though, man. I, like, I get all <laughs> stoked on young people all the damn time, man. It's just like, man, what a cool way to be. You're just like, literally, in a way, you don't give a f- You give too, too many f- and at the same time, you're like, I don't give a shit. you know, it's, it's a, it's a cool way to be. I knew that was coming back with the candy because in my town, we have a really prominent art college called Rhode Island School of Design. And, um, we also have Brown University here. All of a sudden in the last like two years, I see people walk around in Jenkos and I was like, get the <laughs> f- out of here. And like, they don't even look good. They looked, I, I will shit talk at them. It looks horrible. It, it looked horrible when we were doing it. It looks horrible on them. 
I'm like seeing these folks walking across the street. I'm like, that sucks, man. Like, and, but, and then, and then my buddy Tobe. I, for one, love to look horrible. I mean, it get cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting you some Jenkos then. We're doing this. Okay, cool. We're going to be mentally ill, wet as f wearing Jenkos. <laughs> Yeah, man, my my buddy Toby and his band Softkill just uh, did an album, and they have these two, these two women on the cover from the '90s, an old photo that his his wife has of their or her friends, and they're candied out, so candied out. <laughs> it blew my mind when I saw it because I was I was like I used to, I was literally in love with girls like this in the '90s. <laughs> like they were like it like I thought they were like the most amazing crazy aliens I, it was like I would go to the mall. That's what we did. We like went to the mall and candied out, and I would try to like talk to them. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Just to bring it back around now. Um, I'm curious what your favorite songs are on this record. Um, Hot for yeah. Discourse, obviously. I don't know any song titles. Let me look at this real quick. I'm really bad with song titles and, and names. I like Rip This Joint. Uh, no, that's a solid one. Y'all can't... You'll have to look it up. Rip This Joint is real short. It's 24 seconds long. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> But it rips, man. It's like... I'm sure they called it Rip This Joint literally because it just rips. I think Devlin but mentioned should... that too. Devlin, you mentioned Rip This Joint, didn't you? Yeah, I, I really like Rip This Joint. And the, uh, the, uh, the single it seems to be of Sex Automata is mm -hmm. just, just goes... So Sex I Automata that. sounds a little like their old record. Mm -hmm. That's like that's one of those tunes where you can kind of hear what they were up to before. But these song titles are nuts. Should we go through the track listing so people can hear? Or do you think it, for them to look it up is enough? No, you can read through them if you'd like. I, I would really appreciate you reading them out. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right. Start with track one. To the music. Track two. Intro. You see what they did there? <laughs> track three. Pink Noise. Sex Automata, Hot for Discourse, that's hot with two T's and the number four. Yeah, Zoo lead Love. Speak. What's that? Lead Speak. My, my name on Discord isn't Lead Speak. <laughs> What's Lead Speak? I'm missing like... out on all kinds of <laughs> You guys are catching me up on all these things. In the early 2000s, people started putting numbers into everything. We're trying to make it like the new way to talk online. And it was called Lead Speak, but it was L33T Speak. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that had a name. That's cool. It's just replacing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right, That's why right, right. here Annie's thing is Forney thirteen. Yes. <laughs> Forn, Forn thirteen. Yeah, that would be it. Um, anyway. We got Oi Como Sha. We got What Is the Price? Brand new panties. The mystery <laughs> of Brian. Oh, bringing it back. Uh, also bringing it back. Hey boner. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, pee pee. Um. <laughs> Pee pee, hey pee pee. Uh, cool killer, rip this joint. The password is Pelican, and then three weeks, as you as you heard me uh, mention earlier, to buy a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> it's a twenty Whoa. minute album, like it's super short. I just found the old Pitchfork review. They gave it a really high score. They gave it an eight point two. Oh damn. Oh damn. Pitchfork Pitchfork ratings have always like perplexed me. So it's like, what does 8.2 mean? Like, why can't you just give it an 8 or an 8.5 or an 8 or like a 9? Yeah, what did they have to do to get those two decimal points in there? I don't know. <laughs> like, what, what, was the, what was the deciding factor? Like, I don't know, man. He said three weeks, though. And they're like, yeah, you're right. All right, point two. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of interesting. It's kind of funny because Pitchfork has notoriously kind of disliked my band, but I'm like, oh, okay. So you like the X models, though? Fine. F you guys. <laughs> like, whatever. I get it. We're not as good. I guess just looking at the time, we should start wrapping this up. Uh, what are final thoughts on Zoo Psychology by X models here? I think it slaps. Are you asking me? <laughs> Collective question. I think it's. I think it's not a fit. I think it's solid. Twenty minutes of like pure chaos. It's it's very enjoyable. Devlin, how do you feel? I actually think it's incredible. I cleaned my kitchen <laughs> this morning and I was having a great time. I was like it like woke me up. I was like, Yeah, I am ready for the day just listening to like sex automata while washing my dishes. I mean solid. I don't know. It's awesome. I think it rocks. Anyway, X Models record, super good. I love it. I'm glad you guys are into it. Um that's one of the other reasons I was hoping maybe 
if I could talk about it more, maybe it would gain a new audience or something. Just spread the word. I would say this too, if you're listening, not to keep dragging this out, but if you hear zoo psychology and you, you, you don't dig it, check out the previous record, other mathematics. That's a little more, um, that's maybe a little more tangible. Mm-hmm. That one's more of a, like kind of a, like a quick rock and roll band. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. It's, you know, those quick <laughs> bands. Quick My favorite genre, quick, just like quick music. Yeah. Quick. Quick core. Rapid music. Rapid. Somebody. They're like Rolling Stones or Elvis, but <laughs> rapid. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody on uh, Rate Your Music. I think this will be my, my, my final joke about uh, genre names here. Has called uh, X Models uh, New York New Skronk. <laughs> Get the f- are you f- kidding me? Uh, no. When is Scrunk gonna go away? This is crazy. There was like a span of five years where people no, this this Scrunk thing is real, and I'm just dragging this out. I'm just gonna keep going to you cut me off. But there was a period of like five or six, maybe even eight years where like daughters was sometimes referred to as a Scrunk <laughs> band, and. To this day, we we still make jokes about it. We have a, like a litany of jokes about, it. and I thought it came from. I mean, I know what Skronk originally is. It's like a version of. If you don't know Skronk, I think if I remember correctly, Skronk is like some version of jazz way back. Um, and then they use it to s- describe other like angular and disjointed types of music, like zoo psychology and. It started to come back recently. I didn't know it hit X models, but when that band uh, Muse came out and got big, they did a Lightning Bolt cover like right in the beginning. And it was like a press sensation because Lightning Bolt was also starting to catch steam and and no one could have imagined that like a band like Muse would have heard about Lightning Bolt. And uh, Muse did an interview about it and they were like, Lightning Bolt's this band from Boston. They're not. They're from Providence. He was like, they play in abandoned art galleries. That's not true. What the f- is an abandoned <laughs> art gallery? And like, what, like what? What is the draw? <laughs> and and it was like they're a scrunk <laughs> band. And it was just like, our you know, lightning bolts from my town. The whole no! town was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is this now? Okay. Anyway. All right. Anyway. Um. Remember, remember when you said I didn't have to follow? You said I didn't have to follow your server anymore after this. I don't think I can stop following your server. This has to like. Um, for the audience, for this the is audience, awesome. Tuesday has sent us a nightcore remix of Frankie Teardrop by Suicide. <laughs> Again, I just before we finish the Skronk conversation, though, I wanna I wanna say that I looked up Skronk's definition, and I have two very funny things. Oh um, Jesus Christ! So. The dictionary definition of skronk, uh, described as pronounced as skrank for one, and um, yeah, the, what? The, that's what it says. That's no, anyway. That. No, that's crazy. That, anyway, we're not it's doing that. Defined as it has <laughs> it used in a sentence underneath it, and it's in the right hands. Skronk can be sublime. <laughs> and then I also want to pull a Canadianism in here because I what came up is the Canadian Urban Dictionary, and. In Saskatchewan, skronk is a slang for sex, mainly used by teenagers. I I think I've heard that before. That does that doesn't make sex happen. That's what I know. Anyway, we should wrap this up. <laughs> Nick, what have you been listening to lately? Good question. Um, you know what? I'm like I always cycle through music very very quickly, like fast enough where I'm like. You know, like, need it, got it, need it, got it. This is great. This is good. And then I kind of just forget about stuff. Um, the things that are sticking lately are... Um, uh, I really like this guy, God of War. Highly prolific. He just sent me a care package that was, like, 16 releases. And and that was, like, two weeks ago. And he's already released, like, two more records. It's, it's <laughs> crazy. Oh, my God. Um, I like prolific. this old Russian group my friend turned me on to called the Demolition Group. It's okay. kind of like... It's like, uh, it's, it's sort of a post-punk thing, but it sort of is like Art of Noises. Do you know this group? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, what was, they had a really big hit when they, um, when they did Art that of noise, remix. Sorry, not, not yeah, noises. they did that remix with, um, 
shit, what's his name? You remember that, like, 80s, like, TV personality who was, like, a, um, he was, like, a robot, and he, he had sunglasses? Yeah, Max Headroom. They, they oh, did yeah, this, he, like, was like, he was, like, Headroom. the first AI. <laughs> yeah, it was, like, the Max Headroom remix. It was, uh... It's an interesting song. It's good. Art Art of Noise is pretty is pretty gnarly. They got Yeah. Definitely check that out. Decide for yourself. It might also strike you as annoying. Um Demolition Group isn't annoying, but they use a lot of probably similar machines and stuff to get the sounds and and may, maybe just the um the general sound of that time period. Phil, my friend Phil also turned me on to this amazing group called From Nursery to Misery. Um that's fascinating. It's like if the Bills of Grey Gardens started like a really depressed, um, like synth goth thing. <laughs> um, a lo- it, this is from like a, a way back. It's it's totally like an outsider group. They're like shut out. They're like shut ins and hoarders, and they just decided to buy some keyboards and like start this band. That's pretty sad. Um, there's like a little documentary about them. Um, and then other than that, you know, I'm just going through like. I, I, I waited the longest to get Spotify. I j- literally just got it, and I'm just going through, like, random playlists of genres that I like, like EBM. I like I like a lot of, like, industrial and dance music. Anything that sounds, like, really dark and sexy. Anything that sounds like a knife or a leather glove is kind of my sh- and Such uh, as iconic industrial band and everybody's favorite best industrial band, KMFDM. <laughs> yeah, you gotta what fuck with KMFDM. Whole, I mean, I can understand if you don't like it, because not everything's good, but... <laughs> that, that not everything they do is good but today i was playing for my girlfriend one called uh vomito negro uh, which i oh, accidentally yeah. just played sorry I don't... yeah i know vomito negro and, yeah and i was like you know making like inappropriate like sounds as i was driving she's <laughs> like it's like playing and i'm going uh, you know like over there um, because that music is is actually really sexy um you know pretty much anything like a test department oh and i listen to this podcast called um uh oh god hold on i'm just gonna look at it you should check this out if you don't already listen to it it's it's really good a lot of fun i find all kinds of great music because of these guys called noise extra it's it's literally a noise podcast they do the same thing they play like a a hunk of music at the beginning but they're always talking about stuff i've never heard and everything they play well not every not, not not always but sometimes they'll 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 dredge up these things i've never heard of like um the reason i brought it up because this is incredible and you guys might like it um U2? Is that right? Is that how you pronounce that? <laughs> U2? I don't, hold on, I'm trying to find the right. You mean of U2? the edge? And like Bono? I don't know. You know what? Just check that podcast out. I'm sure you'll find all kinds of interesting stuff. These folks have amazing taste and they've been engaged in noise uh, on, a, on a like direct underground level for like decades. Like way longer than it is has become popular now. They've just been doing it for a minute. And so they got all the stuff. They got all the stuff. I wish for the life of me, I downloaded it years ago, um, but this guy had a collection, like, of thousands of 80s noise tapes, and he uploaded them Whoa. all into one, like, one big file, and you could download it all, but none of the none of the files are attached, like, attributed to any names or any, anything, they just have, like, a song name, and that's it. That's crazy. But it's an amazing library. If I can find it again, I'll show it. I'll send it to you guys. But it's it's beautiful. Yeah. It's awesome. Please do. And also just to to shed some light on this podcast, when when it says a noise podcast, it doesn't necessarily mean like a wall of harsh noise or just textures and things. It's a pretty broad way of describing um a music that contains like sort of noise components and stuff. So yeah. they do cover things that are pretty harsh, but they also cover things that kind of fit uh in a loose sense as well guys so no, i'm like, gonna cut it off because i will keep talking i will go and go and go thank yeah, you so I much think, for having me on here yeah thank you so much for coming on yeah but anyway uh let's i think that's enough for today <laughs> um, <laughs> enough of this <laughs> yeah <laughs> um thank you very very much for coming on it was a pleasure to have you no problem. I had a lot of fun. Thank you very much for having me and um, withstanding my attempts to be funny. No, no, you're funny. You're good. <laughs> you are funny. You're funny. You're very funny. I like it. My name is Devlin Galloway. You can follow me at Devlin Galloway on Twitter and Instagram. Like, it's not that exactly anymore, but I don't want to go through the habit of having to say it. You'll figure it out. Um, you can <laughs> follow this podcast at Music Is Good Pod on Twitter and Instagram. 
Um, yeah. I'm Annie Negrin. Um, you can follow me at uh, Tanky Teardrop. Uh, uh, where can we find you, Nick? Nick A. Sadler on Instagram. <laughs> um, and I welcome everyone. Send me a message if you want to ask any questions about uh, anything we spoke about today or you just want to talk about music or something. I love to hear from folks, so please do. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on, Nick. We really appreciate that. No problem. Thank you for having me and, and good luck with your podcast. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.